Fishing like a local isn't just about catching fish. It's about connecting with the environment and the people who call it home. It's about hearing the stories and traditions that have been passed down for generations and sharing unforgettable moments with the people you meet along the way. Fishing like a local is having an experience that stays with you forever. And with Fishing Booker, you can experience it too, no matter where you are. Discover your next adventure on Fishing Booker. This upcoming concert season will be all about the boots, and Tecovis is your stop for the best in Western style. Tecovis has seasonal and limited edition offerings this spring and summer, including men's and women's boots, apparel, hats, bags, and more. All Tecovis boots are made by hand in a time-honored tradition with timeless styles that are always on trend. And Tecovis has first wear comfort with little to no break-in period. It's hard to find this level of comfort paired with this level of style. Stop by your local Tecova store, have a complimentary drink or two, that's WCB style, and shop new styles. The smell of fresh leather and friendly staff are at your service. Many stores even have leather custom branding to make your boots truly personalized. And with regular live music and events, there's no in-store experience like it. If you can't make it into a store, just visit tecovas.com. That's T-E-C-O-V-A-S.com. They offer free shipping on all boots as well as free returns and exchanges and ship right to your door. Go to tecovas.com and find your new favorite pair of boots today. It's done. The goal of the year, part of the past, the celebrations, forgotten, the history, history, we're back to a blank slate, clean ice, all that matters now is what happens next, the Stanley Cup playoffs, Eastern Conference Final begins Wednesday. Survival and Basic Badass Podcast with Kevin and Chuck. Today, we're going to talk about how to survive a mass shooting. Um, You know, big topic, keeps coming up, always insights, all kinds of crazy gun conversation and debate. We'll try not to get political. We'll try and uh, just focus on the facts. All right. Not not even the facts of mass shootings, but let's uh, just focus on what you need to do to be prepared. To make sure you and your babies and your loved ones don't get shot. Mm -hmm. Um, That's really what it comes down to. You know, as preppers, that's a big thing. Why we prepare is to be able to protect the people we care about. You know, there's a lot of people, you know, that you love and want to take care of. You don't want to see your friends and neighbors. Um, Maybe if you're a teacher, your students, um, you know, and maybe your fellow classmates, you know, people around you, your coworkers. Mm -hmm. These things, you know, keep happening. Job site, mall, concert, Mm -hmm. you know, people like you. And that's the thing. Uh, You never know when crazy is going to strike. And I think everybody can agree on both sides of uh, politics that you're probably pretty crazy if you're shooting up a bunch of people. Mm -hmm. Um, So basically, uh, what are some things that you can do to kind of you know, prevent something like this. Now uh, I say prevent, prevent you from getting injured. Right. Um, Like I said, I'm going to leave the politics for another debate. Um, Somebody else can talk about, you know, armed teachers and, and whatever else they want to talk about. But right now when bad things happen to you, what can you do? Mm -hmm. And, and that's, uh, you know, that, that's what today's topic is. So what, uh, I'd say the first thought, the first thing, is uh when you go into a go into a place you know any any place that has a lot of people in it any place that might be a target i mean you should think about this at all times but uh when you go into places like this think about what are your exits yes. you know you look at the main entrance and exit that's always a choke point and that's always where most people die you need to think about the secondary secondary exits if you're in the in the food court think about all the restaurants that are in the food court that you can you know you can get out the back of mm-hmm. uh if you're in you know if you're in an auditorium think about the fire exits 
You know, wherever you're at, think about how you would get out of it if the main entrance was blocked. And maybe if you're in like a dark movie theater, things like that, I know they have exit lights and whatever, but know where they are beforehand, Mm -hmm. before it's dark, before you're desperate, before the room is filled with smoke, before, you know, people are pushing into you, have a plan. I think it all comes down to situational awareness, right? Right. That's a big thing that we always talk about. Be aware of what's going on. You know, um, people... We'll, we'll see, you know, people will be on their bike, like on their phone, and they'll just fall over. Mm-hmm. Um, how many times have you seen somebody walk into a column at the mall or something right. like that because they're staring at their phone mm-hmm. or they trip off the sidewalk? Yeah, I've probably seen three people rear-end somebody else yeah. in the past in the past year. Yeah, just exactly. Just because they're not paying attention to what they're doing. And, and you know, maybe they're reaching down to, to flip the radio, whatever, but mm-hmm. slide I mean, the thing, beer underneath the seat. Pay attention a little bit in life, a little situational awareness. One, know your surroundings. Mm-hmm. Know what's going on. Maybe be a little observant. Is somebody suspicious? And maybe you just keep an extra eye on them, mm-hmm. um, especially as, like, a parent. You know, maybe kids aren't as as worried or, you know, looking around so much. But, you know, as a a parent, it's our job to protect, you know, our kids or or as a teacher, you know, to protect your students. Mm -hmm. So pay attention to what's going on. You know, is somebody acting weird? Is somebody something? But big thing, know your exits, Mm -hmm. know your surroundings, maybe even notice, you know, if something happened, where would I go? What could I hide behind? Mm-hmm. What what is you know you know we've talked about before is a uh, conceal and cover right Con- and there's a big difference between conceal finding a hiding place and finding cover right so concealment means it's concealing or hiding you right right so that's like hiding behind the plant mm-hmm. oh he won't see me there right and you know even in some situations hiding behind a tree is mm-hmm. just concealment right depending on the tree mm-hmm. um. And that's the thing. But if you're hiding behind that big potted plant and the base is three feet off the ground and it's filled with dirt, that might be cover behind it. Mm -hmm. Um, So just noticing these things is the first place to start. Right. Now, so say we're at our favorite place, the movie theater or the the whatever. We're in the food court. Mm -hmm. We're in the classroom. And you start hearing, uh, you know, the pop, pop, you know, uh, of things going bad. What, uh, what do you do? Well, you know what? Uh, I'll tell you what. This might sound a little bit racist. Uh Um, now I'm worried. But uh, all you white folks, you can take a lesson from from your black friends and coworkers. And what do they do? Well. That you'll sounds see. racist. I feel you'll like you're see. going down you'll a see racist because track. of. A Remember, black I person. said let's make this episode wholesome and enjoyable so for everyone, so yeah. they we can. Play well, your it for kids, our kids can look at their look at their black friends too. All right, because black happens? black people hear gunshots and they fucking run away. White people hear gunshots and like, what the heck is going on? Let me go Wait, out here make and make it all that yeah, racket. What's, what's going on here? I remember I was uh in the in the back in the backyard and. Uh, I heard a bobcat screech, and it must have just been maybe 20 feet away. Okay. And if you've ever heard a bobcat, you know it's a terrifying sound. It's not a a hiss or a howl. It sounds like a a little girl's getting murdered. It sounds (laughs) awful. It doesn't sound good. And I said, man, what the heck is that? And I turned around to my wife, and... She was already in the fucking house. <laughs> she, she wasn't. She wasn't waiting to find out what that fu- what that shit was. You know, pay attention to the black folks because they know how to fucking survive shit like that. So you made it six minutes without profanity and racist comments. Is that all we did? Yeah, I think I can beat that. I, th- I think I can get it down to two. Oh my gosh! All right. So yeah, but I mean that's the thing. React. Um. So often. When you watch videos of these, you know, shootings and, and different things playing out, some people just stand there and freeze. Freeze, yeah. Or they just stare. And you're like, what are you doing? Mm-hmm. You know, take action. Some people just drop down and lay on the ground. Mm-hmm. And that's kind of an okay plan if... You know what? The, yeah, the thing, no. is, the thing is, uh, a lot of the time, these mass shooters, when they stop seeing targets... Start shooting dead bodies. It's not uncommon. Don't play dead because uh, you're going to end up dead. Now, 
it I mean, you know, it's worked out. There's mm-hmm. been incidences. There was a girl from the Vegas thing who's like, oh, I just laid on the ground and played dead and everybody around me got shot and I didn't. Mm-hmm. That's kind of the exception. Right. Um, That's not necessarily a, a go to. Mm-hmm. Um, So basically, the first thing you're going to need to do when you when you're hearing, you know, the pop in and stuff going off um. Unless you feel you're somebody who's going to confront and deal with things, you need to get, well, everybody needs to get to cover. Mm-hmm. Even if you are the guy who's going to confront and deal with things. Um, you, you need to get things, you know, I'm out with the family at the movie theater. I'm getting my family to those exits. Mm-hmm. I'm making sure my wife can grab and, and run for that door and she's going to get there. Mm-hmm. You know, I'm going to make sure I'm more of a distraction or whatever that that's going to happen. Right. Um, you also need to think about, you know, not your wife, just your wife and kids. Oh, there's other wives we have to care but about. But I mean, old folks, kids you know, old that people? can't necessarily, can't necessarily, uh, you know. You're putting a lot of pressure make on Make a me, run for is it. Is what I feel like mm-hmm. it. So, bottom line, you need to get people moving. And it might take kind of grabbing them by the shirt. And being mm-hmm. like, move, you know, yeah, and and just getting people going because they just get paralyzed with with fear, with fear, fear, fear. Mm-hmm. Um, so, you know, one, you want to get on cover, you want to hide. But here's the thing, too. I see a lot of these videos. I watched a bunch of videos to kind of prepare for this and and help you know better educate people on what they might do, and like you'll see people hide behind something, and then they stay there. Mm-hmm. And the shooter shoots all the obvious targets, and then, like you said, starts walking around looking for more. And guess what? You're still sitting behind that plant that was ten feet in front of the shooter. Mm-hmm. He's gonna just walk around and shoot you. Yeah, that that's not. So you want to get to cover, but then you want to get out. Mm-hmm. That should be your goal: is right. to get away. You want to keep moving at every opportunity. You want to keep moving further away from the threat. Mm-hmm. Um, so, like, also you want to maybe listen for the break-in gunfire. Mm-hmm. Um, people will stop and reload. Right. This is really a thing. It mm-hmm. happens. And the truth is, they say, general rule of thumb, if you're within 20 feet and he's reloading, you got enough time to get to him. Well, you have enough time to get to him or you have enough time to get gone. Mm-hmm. I hope you're the guy, you're listening to this, you're a prepper, you're prepared. One, hopefully you have a concealed carry right, you and can, can take action. Fire. But even not, you can tackle somebody. You know that guy at the Waffle House? Mm-hmm. Do you remember his name? I can't. James Shaw Jr. James Shaw Jr. This guy was like, you know what? I figured I was going to die, but what am I going to do? Mm-hmm. And as soon as there was an opening, you know, I think he mentions, I knew if he reloaded, I was going to be dead. So I did something. Mm -hmm. Well, the reason people look at him like a hero is because so many people don't do Mm -hmm. anything. Um, We actually had a big uh, shooting at our local mall a couple years back. It was quite a few years back now, maybe 10 or so. Mm -hmm. I think there's still like bullet holes in the wall over (laughs) there. And But this guy just walks in through the sporting goods store and carrying a gun and just starts shooting at people. Mm -hmm. And... You know, nobody did anything. And the security guys just gone. They were like, we're out. You know, we're not dealing with that. Right. They're not armed. And they don't have any way to. Yeah. But nobody, you know, this guy reloaded like five times. Mm-hmm. And nobody tackles him, charges him, nothing. Mm-hmm. And it's insane to me, you know, that you have to take the opportunity or things are going to end badly. Now, if you're the guy who's like, well, I'm not going to put myself in harm's way. Well, you know what? I'm not going to put my family's lives in harm's way. I'm going to get them to cover. I'm mm-hmm. sending them one way, but I'm going to also try and stop the shooter. So that way, one, he's not going to go after my family. Mm-hmm. He's not going to keep chasing them down. And two, I'm going to help other people. Right. You know, you got to take action. So look for that lull in the shooting. That's your time to move. You need to act. Right. And remember, everything is a weapon, you know, whether it's a fire extinguisher or a a plastic knife. A chair, anything you can throw, a Mm -hmm. table, a plant, you know, whatever you can do to distract or injure this guy. 
Now, when it comes to uh, running, though, yes. just to just to you know, just to mention, don't don't run into the bathroom. Don't run into some place where you're going to be trapped, be boxed in. Mm-hmm. Exactly. Well, that that goes back uh, to that situational awareness. Right. Know well, your that, exits. That Orlando shooting. A lot of people just went out the side exits. Uh, you know, there's a patio and different things, but some of the people went into the bathroom, and then the, he went into the bathroom. You know where are you going to go then? There's no yeah. no place to get at, get away from. Them. Well, and also like I, I know it's kind of a weird shift that we've had in the world, but if you guys can remember way back before nine eleven in two thousand one, we used to have that kind of mindset that you could reason with people, mm-hmm. and that was one of the big things. You know, like on the plane where you know it was like always. You know, oh, just listen to hostage takers and do what you're told and right. and whatever, and things will just work out. Mm-hmm. And then we had that big mind shift after that. Right. And, you know, there's no negotiating with the evil. Right. And you can call it crazy. You're, you're not going to talk logic like, oh, hey, man, you don't really want to shoot all these people after you just shot five people. Mm-hmm. Yeah, you're not going to talk these, these people down. You need to take action. Um. So, like I said, get people, you know, to safety, behind cover, out of the way. Look for your opportunities, you know, when there's the lull and the noise. Keep moving forward um, and put as much distance between the bad guy and, you know, Mm -hmm. people who need to get to safety. And like I said, maybe you need to be the guy that takes charge. Um you you have to realize as a prepper, somebody listening to this, you know, most of you have a concealed carry, that kind of thing. There's a good chance you're the best trained person in the room. Mm-hmm. Um, if you're listening to this podcast, you might be the best trained person in the room. You know, in the sad world that we live in, that's the deal, you know? Right. Um, remember, like, uh, in that movie Twins with... Uh, the governor there. Yeah, Arnold and Schwarzenegger and Danny like, DeVito. You know, oh, I bet this was his bed because it's right near the exit and, and the and fire, fire extinguisher. Right. And he'll be able to, you know, these are the kind of things. Like, you got to just be paying attention and looking for the opportunity. Mm-hmm. Um, another thing I wanted to touch on with uh, with cover. You know, people always are like, oh, I'm going to go hide behind that car. Mm-hmm. Well, depending on the vehicle, bullets go through cars. Right. That's not always safe. Now, the best places you can be is behind the tire and axle because mm-hmm. it's not going to go all the way through, you know, and, and through the tires. The same thing, you want to be behind the engine block. So you mm-hmm. want to put, you know, some serious bulk right. between the shooter and you. Mm-hmm. Um, You know, but it depends. But just don't count on, like, a car being the, you know. Right. Look for something, you know, a little more substantial. Um, another thing, when you're going for an exit, we had a, uh, there was a, a big fire, and, and I assume it was national news um, in Long Island or, or New Jersey. I think it was Long Island. I think it was that band, Great White or, or one of them. And they had a big fire in the nightclub because they had pyrotechnics and whatever. And believe it or not, people were trying to get out of there and, the security guys were not letting people go up to the exits behind the stage because that was for banned people. Mm -hmm. And you know what? If some loser is in your way telling you, hey, you can't go here because whatever, and there's life-threatening danger, Mm -hmm. you need to just blast that guy right in the face with your fist. Fuck that guy. And keep moving Mm -hmm. because in no way... Do you need to let somebody come between you and your safety? Don't let normalcy bias, you know, mm-hmm. kind of yeah. convince you that it's okay to just, hey, oh, I should follow yeah, the you rules. Can't, you don't have to behave normal in an abnormal situation. Exactly. So don't be afraid. Um, another thing, like— You know, in that in that fire, yeah, twenty five. they found 25 bodies by the front main exit because it was a bottleneck. Yeah. And, and people ran to the front exit— there were other exits they could have gone to, but they ran to the one that they came in at because that was the only was one they were aware of. And it's so crowded. It's dark. This place ended up being filled with smoke, that kind of thing. Mm-hmm. You need to cover your options, you know? Mm-hmm. So 
that's something you guys really need to uh, consider. Um, another thing they talk about is, uh, you know, I think for the classrooms and some of the office buildings, you know how the the uh, the doors have the closers, mm -hmm. and they talk about, you know, they make little locks they can put on them and different things. Some of the classrooms now have deadbolts. Maybe that's the norm. I don't know. I don't yeah. hang out in classrooms, but whatever. But also, remember, you can do other things. Like, people take the belt, and they tie it around, you know, the door closer. Um, you know, they said there's never been a mass shooter that breached a locked door. Oh, yeah? Yeah. They said they go to a locked you door, and then they just time. go on. Right. right. They're they're moving. So, setting up a barricade, shutting the lights off, they talk about doing, but still go find cover. Mm -hmm. But I got to tell you, I mean, I don't know. Here, Here's the thing. I don't want to tell you to defy what conventional wisdom and authorities are telling you. Mm -hmm. And when nobody knows what's going on and you don't know where the shooters are and they tell you, oh, just stay in place. But I got to tell you, how much better would it be if you're in the classroom and you're like, screw it, we're going out the window, we're on ground level. Right. Let's get the hell out of the building because yeah. we know the shooters in the hallway. Mm -hmm. It's very rare there are you know, multiple shooters, although Columbine or whatever, I think yeah. that was the deal. Maybe, There's but... two, yeah. Or th possibly three. Right. There may have been a third person. Right. But, I mean, for the most part, get out the freaking window. Why wait in the room and sit to be a victim? Mm -hmm. um, you make your own decision if you're going to listen to authority and right. whatever. But uh, I've jumped out of a second-story window. Not that bad. And doesn't feel good. But it feels better than getting shot. And especially when you're a kid, you're all pliable and whatnot. Uh -huh. I used to jump off a lot bigger things that I feel comfortable jumping off now. <laughs> yeah, the body doesn't work the same <laughs> it way. It does it not. You know, I, I don't know. Maybe that's just me. Mm. But, you know, look for, think of real exits and keep getting away. Unless mm -hmm. you're going to tackle the guy or attack him or go after him with a gun or set up a trap or an ambush or a way to deal with it. You yeah. need to keep trying to first, get away. The first five seconds, they say, is the most important. What you do in that first five seconds, what you don't want to do during those first five seconds is freeze. What you don't want to do is be the, the asshole in the first five seconds that says, well, what am I going to do? Where am I going to go? What am I going to... No, nah, already have that shit worked out in your head. Yeah. You know, anytime you're in any place, have that shit worked out in your head. It just sounds right. Mm -hmm. um, next thing, uh, now, first aid and treating people. Um, know about tourniquets. Learn how to use a tourniquet. Learn how to make a tourniquet out of your belt. Mm -hmm. Learn how to use your shirt and some kind of stick to, you know, twist it up if that was your only resource. Right. Um, and remember, getting shot, uh, you know, getting shot once is not lethal. Not, not often. Not usually, and not in America. We got the best doctors in the world. And AR-15s you know? are just tiny little bullets. Just tiny little things. They're not even anything. <laughs> you, you just shake that off. Just slap that away. You know? So, you know, hey, you got to think a little bit. But what I will say, it's not, don't get yourself shot trying to take care of the injured. Now, if you're the cool guy and you want to run out, grab somebody and pull them back, I'm not going to fight you on that. Mm -hmm. You take your risks. You decide what's right for you and who you're willing to protect to keep them from getting shot. But you're also not going to run out to the guy and try and put a tourniquet on him while you're exposed. Mm -hmm. And on the same token, if you have a means of self-defense, if there's something you could be doing to stop the shooter, that should come first before you go treating injuries on other people. Right. If you're able to stop the shooter. You need to shooter. stop the threat or get away from the threat first. Mm -hmm. But if you're both sitting behind a desk and there's no exit to the room aside of the same way that the shooter is coming from, mm -hmm. then treat the wound by all means. Right. I'm just saying don't avoid taking action by doing first aid. Mm -hmm. You know, taking action to either get the hell out of there or take action fighting back mm -hmm. do not leave yourself exposed but then it's time to treat the wounds you guys really need to learn basic first aid yeah, and you first need to aid learn makes a huge difference treating in survival. a gunshot wound mm -hmm. you need to learn about tourniquets you'll need to learn about you know stuffing wounds and and you know covering things up applying pressure closing things off this stuff matters yeah um 
These are the steps that are going to get you through a mass shooting. What? That's it. That's no, it? Um, I think that a uh, a lot of um, a lot of these mass shootings go on a lot longer than they have to. I think that's right. And uh, you know, if you're unarmed, you just need to wait for your opening. Now, you know, it's better to to at least attempt to subdue somebody. Right. Then throwing your body at bullets is not going to help right, anybody. Right. Getting shot is not not that, helpful. That's not helpful. That's, you're not stopping anybody by getting shot. But waiting for the opportunity mm-hmm. and then taking it. But you want to be looking for the opportunity. Right. You need to be actively, what can I do? Or scanning for what weapons or mm-hmm. what you can do to get people out of there while he's distracted doing whatever he's doing. Mm-hmm. And maybe Bones it's heal. a girl. I mean, I don't even know why I'm assuming the mass shooter is a, a man. Every mass shooter has been a man. He's been a man. <laughs> yeah, it's just the way inherently, it goes. Well, I did say that these people were evil mm. and men. Yeah, women evil. can't be evil. Women it's can't not be even, evil. That not even sense. possible. Not even a thing. Mm-hmm. So, you know, with that. You need to be, you know, looking Bones in that heal, direction. Chicks dig scars. America has the best doctors in the world, right? I think I, I heard that on The Simpsons or something. Somebody said that. Somebody said that. Um, yeah. So that's heroes what you need to get be laid. doing. And that's, heroes get laid. Yeah, that's that's a fact. That's the hands down. Indisputable. Yeah. All right. I mean, it worked for Chuck Norris, right? Mm-hmm. <laughs> <laughs> No, oh, we're bringing shame to the world. Yeah. The other thing is, if you're a policeman, don't. And there's a mass shooter, you actually want to go towards the guy. Right. So, like, if, if you're, that's your if job, you're in the school and you're like the school security guy, and you hear a shooter, these things we said about taking cover and running away that doesn't apply to you. Now you can take cover while you get a shot. Mm-hmm. That's okay. But hiding in the janitor closet and shutting the door, that's not, that's a no-go. All right. Um, If you're outside and are like, ooh, it sounds dangerous in there, that's a Mm no-go. So just a little, you know, heads up. I mean, you know, I like you guys, but I just, you know, make sure we're all on the same page. Mm -hmm. Towards the violence, Mm. be a go-getter, Yeah. hard charger. Mm Mm-hmm. That or pick a different job. Yeah, you're in the wrong job if that if that's your first reaction. You know, so whatever. Um, you guys have been great to us, supporting a lot of our sponsors, taking care of, you know, everything. We really appreciate it. You know, we got that Facebook page, the Facebook group. You can hear some of my rants throughout the week. You kind of get some insights into where Chuck's mind's going a lot of the time. Mm -hmm. Um, We're actually starting to be a little active on Instagram. I didn't even know that was a thing. That is a thing, huh? I take pictures of, like, guns or something and just throw it on there. Throw it on there. Whatever. What's the the name of that um, Utah video sharing uh, website? I think it's called Huge Tube. So, U-G-E, Utah Gun Exchange. All right. And they basically, you know, got tired of everybody getting banned. And, you know, Facebook, YouTube, everybody, oh, you're talking too much about guns. You shot guns. You showed people how to make their guns more awesome. You're a badass. Well, you have a beard. Mm -hmm. You know, that kind of thing. They set up something so that, you know, guys who love guns. Now, some of you on Facebook were like, you know, Chuck, this is just about guns, and, and I'm scared, and, and and I'm worried about it, and I feel like it, it's called the survival prepping page, and, and you're just talking about guns. Well, yeah, I'm a jerk like that. Mm-hmm. But So whatever. If you like guns, you should be listening to us, and if guns scare you, you should be listening to us because we'll straighten you out. Mm-hmm. So Yeah, so— uh... Yeah, UGE Tube. Uh, we have one video posted up there right now. Oh yeah. But um, you know, if you want to go and and uh, post some videos, if you want to watch some videos, it's a good spot to go. Uh, YouTube's getting old. It's for old people anyway. Wait, we're on YouTube. Oh yeah. Never mind that Wait, last part. Wait, what? You guys want to go to the Prepping Badass channel on YouTube? Yeah, we are yeah. on YouTube. He's you can right, subscribe though. to us. Yeah, we are gonna throw some more stuff up on the huge tube. <laughs> And, you know, support people who support our values. Mm-hmm. I mean, that's really what it's all about. Um, you know, hey, find people like you and, and stick with them. So, 
Yeah, if you guys want to uh, contact us, let us know anything uh, about anything that we don't know about, like YouTube that I just found out about. Uh, you you can email us at survivalbadass at, uh, is it preppingbadass at gmail.com. At gmail.com. Now, actually, did you see somebody posted in the Facebook group about how there were Kevin and Chuck-isms? Are there? Well, there are. I didn't know that. Apparently, apparently a Chuck-ism is Chuck might say, you should do what you did the first time except try harder. Oh, okay. I didn't know that. Does, is there a Kevinism? There is a Kevinism. Um, mm -hmm. I might be able to pull that up for you if you entertain him for a second. Well, I think that... um. You know, I think that most swear words would be Kevinisms. I don't know that there's anything that I actually say. In the Kevinism, yeah, I, I try. I really try my hardest, but it just comes out. I'm a passionate person. All right, so it was Melissa that actually put it up there. All right, and it says, uh, "Do what you did before, but try harder." All right, and then it says, "Man up," with Chuck. Mm -hmm. Kevin apparently says, "I have an intolerance for bullshit." Oh, yeah. is his standard go-to <laughs> phrase. Yeah, I don't know that that's uh, you know, I didn't know that it was a Kevinism, but that's definitely something I. That's a value I stand What's, behind. I didn't even recall saying mine on on the mm -hmm. podcast, but if you were in my house, you'd know that you hear that you quite hear a that bit all the time, huh? All my kids would be like, "God damn it, that, that's <laughs> ridiculous." Uh huh. Because they're like, it didn't work out. Nothing yeah. went my way. Mm -hmm. It's because you didn't do it right. Try harder. Mm -hmm. So, you guys feel like you need to step up your preps? Well, whatever you're doing, try harder. Yeah. Uh, join us on Facebook. Uh, if you do email us, I will email you back. Um, I do get emails from people that are completely crazy, and I even email crazy people back. Now, do you think that like they know they're the crazy ones? I don't. I don't think... That they know that the crazy person. All right, so we're not. Gonna but if tip you're you off. if you're emailing me, you might be crazy. And you're and you're talking about talking about uh, your affinity for beating up gay people, or your racist crazy rants. You're the crazy person I'm talking about. Okay. All right. So kindness and love is what you're talking about. Yeah. Let's all just love each other a little bit more. Right, live and let live. Yeah, sure. Why not? All right. <laughs> and with that, stay safe, and we'll talk to you guys next week. The Survival and Basic Badass Podcast is a proud member of the Self Defense Radio Network. Ooh.